Thank you, Quinton, and thank you, uh, Human Synergistics, for putting me on in the graveyard session. <coughs> I'm the only thing between you and lunch. I'm not sure um, uh, why you're here today, but uh, let me explain the two reasons why I'm here today. The first is um, I'm very proud of uh, our story, and the second uh, reason is that I see this as a uh, first-class uh, recruitment opportunity. <laughs> uh, very seldom in your career you get to talk to 500 people um, at one go, so if any of you are in the slightest bit interested when I've finished, um, uh, I'll be staying for lunch and you can give me your business cards. Uh, as, this is a, um, uh, as this is a forum which is largely filled with HR people, I thought I might share with you my, uh, uh, my HR story. Um, and it's, um, it's about a, uh, an HR manager who was at a convention and decided to visit the local brothel. Um, and he asked the, uh, the madam of the brothel, uh, in true HR spirit, is this a union house? Uh, and she said, no, I'm sorry, it isn't. Um, and he said, well, if I pay $100, uh, what does the girl get? And she said, well, the house gets $80 and the girl gets $20. He was mightily offended by, uh, by the unfairness of this and stomped off in search of a more equitable HR brothel. <laughs> Finally, he reached one where the madam said, why, yes, this is a union house. And he said, well, if I pay $100, what do the girls get? And she said, the girl gets 80 and the house gets 20. He said, fantastic. And he looked around the room, and there was this gorgeous young blonde lady sitting in the corner, and he said, well, I'd like her for the night. And the madam said, I'm sure you would, sir, guess, but gesturing at a 70-year-old woman sitting in the corner, she said, Ethel here has seniority. Let me, uh, uh, I didn't come here to tell jokes. Uh, hopefully you'll agree with me at the end of the session. Um, let, me, uh, uh, let me start off with uh, uh, Lion Nathan's performance uh, in 1997 uh, uh, when I joined. Uh, and this chart really uh, sums it up best. Um, this is our share, our uh, after-tax earnings um, uh, in Australian dollars, uh, which had actually declined um, at 3% uh, from 93 through to 97. And I think this sums up really uh, uh, better than, uh, than anything I can say uh, the faults uh, with the company. Um, but rather than um, uh, elaborate on those, because I think uh, in fairness um, to the people who were there at the time and in fairness to my predecessors, um, rather than focus on history, uh, what I'd prefer to do is talk about the future. Because the interesting thing is a large number of people who are currently with us uh, were also there then. So what did we do in trying to uh, uh, change uh, Lion Nathan? Um, and I'm intrigued, uh, having listened to, uh, to Chris's outstanding performance, uh, the large degrees of similarity between what he went through in his organization and what we went through. Uh, and I guess in reflecting on this uh, uh, this morning before I came here, uh, the obvious answer is it is pretty obvious. Uh, nothing that we did uh, was rocket science, uh, and nothing what, uh, that we did uh, was earth-shattering. Uh, I guess the important difference was we did it. So the first thing was we established a leadership team of like-minded individuals. When I shared that with Bob Barber, who's our HR director, he said, like-minded with whom? <laughs> <laughs> and I said, Bob, why would you ask such a question? Like-minded with me. Secondly, uh, <clears throat> we worked on the principle um, that worry about the elephants and the ants will take care of themselves. And so uh, Australia was 70% of our uh, assets, it was 70% of our profits, and it was 150% of our uh, uh, problems. And so what we did was we, uh, we focused on our Australian business. Um, we got some early wins, uh, which was fantastic. And uh, I'm, I'm with Jack Nicholas. Uh, the harder you work, the luckier you get. Um, and we were, we were pretty lucky, but we got some early wins. Uh, we took some bold choices. Uh, I remember uh, 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 the board uh, uh, calling me and saying, 
Um, do you realize that what you're doing uh, here is betting the entire company? And I'd never looked at it that way, but that was certainly a perspective, um, uh, which unnerved them. Um, but fortunately, and to their eternal credit, they were, um, um, they were bold enough uh, to back me. Um, we were very explicit about our vision and values. Uh, we did this the uh, tried, and uh, tried and tested way. Uh, we got all the books, you know, built to last, uh, in search of excellence, all that kind of stuff. We looked down uh, at everyone's vision and values. You can choose one. You know, if you begin with L, if your name's with L, you can choose one. Um, and, uh, and, quite, and quite frankly, we threw it away um, because uh, we decided that if we were going to choose vision and values, instead of looking externally, we had to look internally. Uh, and so... Uh, as a group, um, uh, as a top team, as a, as a leadership team, we went away for three days um, uh, to talk about nothing else other than what we'd like to be when we grew up. <clears throat> and let me tell you, um, uh, uh, it was a, uh, not only was it a painful experience beforehand because everyone kept saying to us, why are you guys going away for three days to talk about yourselves? Um, and the board asked that question as well. And not only that, but the people who were there um, asked that question. Um, <laughs> Um, but we figured, uh, and I'll share with you those vision and values in a moment, but we figured um, if we're going to uh, have vision and values, then the first thing is uh, we have to walk the talk. And there are sm some small examples of that. So when I get on an airplane to go to Adelaide this, uh, or to Melbourne, this might be an interesting uh, uh, question for you. I commonly pass uh, some of my colleagues on the business council who are sitting up the front of the plane. Um, I, as a matter of course, sit at the back of the plane. And the reason I sit at the back of the plane is because most of the people I'm traveling with sit there as a matter of course in any case. And so I figure if I travel, then I want to travel with them so I can talk to them, so I sit at the back of the plane. Um, uh, this n had never occurred to me until uh, on one occasion I was getting on an airplane with Roger Corbett, who happens to be um, our largest customer. Uh, and I noticed that Roger, who is like-minded, went to the back of the plane as well. And I sat down and he tapped me on the shoulder and he said, um, well, I'm glad to see uh, that you're using my money very effectively. <laughs> uh, the next thing we did was we put in a performance management system, a very rigorous one, um, that, um, that worked on the principle um, that what you get is what you inspect rather than what you expect. Um, and, uh, and so what we did was, given that we were trying to change the culture in a huge way, we wanted to make sure that we're on the right track. And then the final thing is uh, we celebrated success, uh, whether it be a small success or whether it be large successes. Um, and we've kind of retained that as well. So uh, on a Friday evening now, um, uh, in Lion Nathan head office, we have the trolley dollies. Uh, the trolley dollies um, are chosen randomly. Um, and what they do is at 5 o'clock they come down with the drinks trolley um, and serve drinks to people and, and congratulate people on the successes they've had during the week. Sounds trite, but let me tell you, after a hell of a week, um, I used to work in the uh, confectionery industry, uh, and after a tough week, you know, you could say to people, uh, well, it's been a tough week, come and I'll buy you a bar of chocolate. <laughs> um, uh, now let me get to the uh, intellectual part of the presentation. Um, um, <laughs> Business is a process, um, uh, and we look at, in a, at it in a systemic way, um, and we look at achievement as not something you can do by focusing on achievement, um, although that may, might sound uh, something of an oxymoron. In order to get achievement, you have to focus on culture, and in order to get culture, you have to focus on leadership. Um, and the three are actually interconnected like cogs in a machine, and if something comes between any of the cogs, it actually stops the process. Uh, and I can talk uh, with some authority on this because um, I spent a day at Enron in the United States about 12 months ago. Um, and uh, quite frankly, uh, they believed that the only thing that mattered in uh, achievement was focusing on achievement. And it didn't matter what it took. Um, uh, achievement was the be-all and end-all. And actually, culture and leadership um, were ignored. So let me start now with the leadership cog. Um, and let me share with you uh, how we attract talent, how we select talent, how we orientate talent, uh, how we develop it, how we challenge and motivate talent, and how we evaluate and remunerate talent. Uh, and I'm conscious of the fact that um, I'm due to finish at 1 o'clock, so I'll move fairly quickly. Okay, how do we attract leaders? Uh, the first thing we do is uh, we provide them with a distinctive value proposition. Uh, 
leaders, uh, managers, uh, people who want to come and work with us are no different uh, to consumers. Uh, they look at what do I uh, get for what do I pay? Um, and so uh, for us, the ultimate value proposition is what we say to people is uh, come to Lion Nathan because you can make a difference. If you're in a business, is that my phone? <laughs> it's probably my wife saying, um, are you prattling on? Because <laughs> I told her I was coming to speak to 500 close personal friends today. <laughs> and she said, why would anyone pay to come and hear you? Um, my biggest fan. Um, so uh, people come to Lion Nathan because um, uh, in their previous jobs, they've been part of a machine. They don't actually see how they can make a difference. Um, and we say to them, uh, we're here to change. Uh, those changes will be enormous, um, and we will give you the freedom to make change. So our value proposition is we provide people with challenging jobs, and I'll define what challenging means in a minute. We give them the freedom to act. Uh, we give them the recognition, um, which is actually much more important than anything else. Uh, we give them the development, and we uh, institutionally believe that we don't owe people jobs, we don't owe people careers, but we do actually owe them development. Uh, and then underneath that, uh, and this is the uh, denominator, if you will, uh, we have a pay for performance metric. Um, and interestingly, uh, we are upper quartile payers, um, but I'm not sure that that makes a hell of a difference. I think that's just a hygiene factor. Um, the stuff that's the numerator is actually significantly more important. And then, um, in addition to that, we provide people with a motivating sense of purpose. Uh, why do they come to work with us? Well, it's not only to make a difference, but because uh, they believe that they're changing the world. And we believe this sincerely, uh, that we're not in the business of brewing beer or making wine. We actually believe that we're in the business of making the world a more sociable place. Um, and if you think about it, um, uh, people spend uh, their lives becoming more and more miserable until they get a glass of beer or a glass of wine. Once they've got a glass of beer or a glass of wine in their hand, now, don't take my word for it. Uh, think, of a, think, of a, think of a Friday evening. I go home, my wife will say to me, uh, so what kind of week have you had? I've got my head buried in the newspaper and I'm grunting. Uh, not making much sense and like a bear with a sore head. Um, uh, she's smart enough, because my wife's much smarter than me, um, and she goes and gets me a glass of wine or a glass of beer, hands it to me, and then all of a sudden, we have a different dialogue. I become a human being. I talk to her about what ha what's happened at work. We have a friendly conversation. Uh, so my wife is, uh, signs up for the notion that we actually are in the business of making the world a more sociable place. Uh, and if you want, I have uh, lots of uh, friends uh, uh, from uh, the Middle East, uh, both Israeli friends and Arab friends. And let me tell you, I think the Middle East problems could be solved. <laughs> Never mind George W. Bush, just, just give them a drink. <laughs> okay, let me, uh, let me now share with you how we select leaders. Um, I see my uh, role as the uh, chief talent officer uh, for the organization. That means um, I'm happy to get on a plane and go to London to interview someone, uh, which I've done on regular occasions. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Um, I see my first job as uh, uh, to make sure that we have appropriate bench underneath me. Um, the board set me a very high hurdle, which was uh, when I retire, there should be three people who should be three in people internally who are capable of taking my job. Um, I review uh, the top 150 managers in the company every six months, and I'm regularly, um, I spend 60% of my diary time, and I know I've done this. I've done a diary sort now for the last two years, 60% of my diary time on people. Um, the second thing is um, that we worked on the principle that we needed a good partner, and all credit here to Egon Zender, who we use um, in a particular way um, to, hire, uh, to hire people. We have a very rigorous uh, screening process uh, where we screen people, and I'm sure you do this as well, we screen people to start with, then we have an interview template, because I've found most people are very bad at interviewing. They just sit down and talk as opposed to really getting to, the, uh, to the, uh, the nub of the issue. And most candidates are very skilled and practiced at interviewing, so they play the same game. Um, I remember uh, once, uh, one of the questions that we ask in the interview template is, um, uh, how would you like to be remembered? And I was interviewing a chap called uh, David Swallow, and I'm sure he won't mind this, because his, in his interview answer was the best I've ever heard. He said, 
one swallow does make a summer. Uh, we test people, uh, we test them for numerical reasoning, for verbal critical reasoning, and we actually have a norm, um, and it's uh, very unusual. In fact, almost, um, I can't think of an instance where we've taken someone who falls below the norm, uh, and then we do multiple interviews where um, I would interview people, my colleagues would interview people, the board would interview people. We get a multi-dimensional view of people, and on that basis, um, do we go forward. And then finally, you can go through all those processes, um, but we also rely on gut feel, and we take them out for dinner. Um, and I remember, I remember, uh, and I'm sure Walter won't mind me saying this, but the managing director of our Australian business, uh, one of the uh, real talents in the organization, um, I took him out for dinner before we hired him, and I said to him, uh, Walter, what would you like to drink? And normally most people are smart enough, they go, beer, wine. He said, I'll have a Campari and soda, please. I said, you'll have a what? <laughs> he no longer drinks Campari and soda. <laughs> uh, once we've got people in, how do we orientate them? Um, uh, this is uh, critical in the business. Uh, there's a 90-day game plan. And that 90-day game plan is basically, at the end of 90 days, what difference have I made? We work on the principle, if people don't make a difference in the first 90 days, um, then they won't actually make a difference. Now, I see a number of people writing notes here. Um, I'm very happy to make this presentation available. Um, so uh, for, uh, for those of you who want it, you can either get it on our website uh, wh uh, where it'll be available or you can get it through Human Synergistics. So for those of you who are spending all your time laughing, just lie back, relax, and enjoy it. <laughs> um, so how do I make a difference in the first 90 days? Um, we assimilate not only what they achieve in the first 90 days, but how they go about doing it. And then we give people one-on-one -on -one feedback during those first 90 days on a regular basis. I'm talking on a weekly basis. I have actually done it on a daily basis. Um, and the person I did it with on a daily basis left us after eight weeks. <laughs> um, how do we develop leaders? Uh, well, we give them challenging jobs with stretching targets. Um, uh, there's a lot of debate about how you set targets. We don't have any debate. Targets are set top down. Um, and uh, we work on the principle, if you know how to achieve the goal, it's far too easy. Um, we proactively develop people by rotation. Um, the best leadership development, we believe, is uh, in at the deep end and figuring out how to swim with the appropriate supports. Um, but. Uh, uh, we found that by putting people into situations which are beyond them, uh, you actually see not only what their technical ability is, but also what their moral fiber is as well. In addition to that, we run no other internal programs apart from a leadership program. That leadership program, uh, all of the top team and others teach on. Uh, we use our own case study stuff, um, and we believe that's the best way to develop leadership. Challenging jobs where people are put in at the deep end and then provide them with the leadership tools to be able to do that. Uh, for those who are fortunate enough, uh, we take uh, about 20 to 25 people to the United States for two weeks. Uh, we go to the most admired companies in the United States and we learn from them. And we do that in a very uh, uh, systematized way. And then for the fortunate few um, who are um, uh, the stars in the organization, uh, we send them to Harvard. In addition to uh, the rotational development, if you're going to ask people to take on jobs that they are um, not that comfortable in doing, uh, we give them the right to fail. Um, so for example, uh, I mentor um, one of our uh, top finance talent. Um, he uh, moved into sales at our request. He found and we found that he wasn't particularly suited to sales, but that doesn't matter because he was a top class finance guy, so he comes back into the finance function. A number of companies I've observed, once people move into a job on a rotation basis, if they don't do it well, then uh, they're surplus to requirements. In addition to the uh, rotational development, when we rotate people into these demanding roles, we work on the sandwich principle, that the person above them should be a star performer and the person below them should be a star performer as well. That way they have the security blanket. Uh, we provide people with professional coaches. Um, uh, I'm one who's had a coach uh, for two years. Um, and there are a number of people in the room from Lion Nathan who have professional coaches. And we work on the principle, you can only go so far on your own, and then you need uh, help to actually extend the boundaries of your performance. Um, we have a mentor program. It's by, it's by uh, uh, consent, so we don't have to do it. Um, and not only that, but the worst examples of that, I think, are mentor programs where people just put ticks in boxes. 
Uh, the mentorship program is on the basis that anything gets said in the room stays in the room and there's that mutual trust. Uh, and I'm a great believer in it because uh, not only do I have a mentor, but I mentor three other people as well, two within the organization and one, no, sorry, one within the organization and two have left the organization. And then finally, we have one-on-ones. And the one-on-ones are not performance reviews, how are you doing in your job? The one-on-ones are, what are you doing? And how are you developing as an individual? And those are very conf confronting. And my experience, um, having lived in Australia now for a number of years, is um, most Australians find it very difficult to give direct feedback. So let me give you some examples of how we've developed people. I've just chosen three um, at random. Um, uh, before I came here, our HR director said, well, you can't put their names up because now they'll be on everyone's talent hire list. <coughs> And my, and my view was, if they don't want to stay with the organization because we're not providing them with meaningful challenges, then the problem's ours. The problem is not theirs. Um, so Gillian Davison was the finance director at our Swan Brewery, which is a division of Lion Nathan, um, about, uh, about $200 million in sales. Then he went to uh, a joint venture we had with Pepsi as the finance director there. Uh, then he became the finance director of our billion dollar business, which is our Australian business. Uh, then we sent him on a rotational development into what is largely a sales job as the managing director of our TUI's business um, in New South Wales. Then we sent him to Harvard Business School, and now he's the managing director of our second largest division, which makes $100 million in profit a year, and that's in five years. Um, Doug Meisner, who was the sales director of Pepsi, which was a joint venture, he became the managing director of TUI's prior to Julian. Uh, then he became the sales director of Lion Nathan, uh, which is, again is our largest business unit. And now, uh, because he's such a uh, uh, first-class uh, executive, uh, we've uh, sponsored him to do the uh, MBA full-time at Macquarie University, which uh, we pay his salary, uh, we pay his fees, and we've told him when he comes back if he would like to come and work for us, the job that he has when he comes back. And then Simon Smith, um, I went to London uh, for a one-hour interview. Uh, with Simon, he was a senior engagement manager with McKinsey in London. I managed to persuade him to come away because of a strong value proposition. Um, he came and joined us as planning director in an Australian business. Then he wanted to move into marketing um, uh, to get some commercial experience, which we did. And he was marketing director on our premium beer team. Uh, and then eBay came along and offered him a job that we wouldn't have offered him um, because we didn't think he was ready, um, but they did. Um, and they offered him a managing director's job of eBay Australia. We remain great friends, and I'm his mentor. Um, I, I, I threatened to uh, share with you my uh, LSI, uh, and uh, uh, tr true to my word, uh, here's my LSI. I'm particularly proud of this, uh, because you can see, uh, for those of you who are experts in this area, that my primary style is self-actualization. I'm receptive to change. I have a strong belief in myself. I've got high energy levels. I'm accessible. This is what it says. Um, <laughs> again, my wife uh, said, uh, did you pay for this? <laughs> did you actually get someone to come along and tell you this? Why didn't you sit down with, with the family? Um, <clears throat> and my backup style is affiliation. Uh, 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 it says I've got good interpersonal skills. I care about people and about teamwork. Um, this is my LSI from, uh, uh, from this year. Um, let me take you back five years, um, and I'm, uh, I'm too ashamed to show you five years ago, uh, because it could be best described as a basket case. Uh, and I don't underestimate or, un uh, or, or exaggerate. My primary style was achievement, um, and my, second, my secondary style, my backup style, was competitive. Um, and the organization took its cues from me, so you get a very task-orientated, aggressive, defensive style. Um, and the organization, hopefully, and I feed off that as well, um, uh, has a much more constructive style now because my um, behavior is much more constructive. So I've actually taken um, uh, 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 an apocalyptic conversion um, uh, from being uh, a total basket case um, to being uh, someone that the organization can now tolerate. Um, and the fundamental principle behind this is if you expect people to change, then the first thing uh, to change uh, is yourself. Um, you can't lead people if you're saying, uh, do as I uh, say, not as I do. 
Uh, and let me tell you, this has been hugely painful uh, for me uh, in particular because we have a, a very, uh, I, th I think, quite confrontationary uh, way of handling this. We stand up in front of our peers. We have to keep our mouth shut for about 15 minutes, which for me is almost impossible. Um, the, uh, you share your LSI with people and then ask for feedback. Uh, and let me tell you, uh, over the five years, my colleagues haven't been backward about coming forward. Um, how do we evaluate leaders? Um, well, we have an, as an assessment process um, that's, uh, three dimension, uh, that's uh, three by three matrix. Uh, not only what they do, uh, but how they do it. Um, and let, uh, let me tell you, we lose more people on the how than on the what. Um, we give 360 degree feedback. Uh, there's a lot of uh, intellectual debate as to whether that's appropriate, whether people start gaming it, because if you scratch my back, I'll scratch yours. We haven't found that yet. We've found 360 degree to be fantastic. I benefit from it, so I get 360 degree feedback. The chairman gets involved, my board colleagues get involved, and the people that work with me on the top team and give me 360 degree feedback, and it's fantastic. Uh, we do a talent review uh, where we spend three days uh, as a top team reviewing the top 150 managers in the organization every, every six months. That we then share that with the board. And then for the individuals in the organization, we have a development plan. Um, and let me tell you, that's one of the areas uh, that we don't do very well. So here's the matrix. Um, it's uh, results on one uh, axis and competency on the other. And if you're fantastic at results and uh, you're very competent, high emotional intelligence, high self-awareness, a humanistic encouraging style, then you're a consistent star. Um, and if you've got no emotional intelligence um, and don't get results, uh, you're a take action now. Um, and uh, uh, we uh, looked at force ranking um, our people. It was very fashionable uh, at Enron. Um, it was very fashionable at Ford. Uh, we visited Enron and decided against it. Um, and the reason we decided against force ranking people is because it encourages internal competitiveness. I get on at the expense of someone else. What this does is enable people to see how they can improve. Um, how do we challenge our leaders? Um, uh, it's, the, it's the classic tight loose. We, stretch, uh, we set uh, stretching performance goals. They're set top down. Um, I, I don't agree with Jack Welsh um, that you should have um, um, a situation where you, don't, um, where you don't bother having a negotiation, you just leave it up to the team and the internal pressure uh, creates uh, stretching performance goals. Um, we set them from the top and we then uh, challenge our people to spend their creative thinking time figuring out how to do it, not spend their creative thinking time negotiating with the, uh, uh, with the top team. We have disciplined reporting. Um, so this is the tight part. We get daily sales, daily margin. We have a weekly conference call uh, throughout the organization. We have monthly reviews and we have quarterly performance reviews where I spend two weeks, uh, just over two weeks, uh, reviewing all parts of the business. Uh, we have a make plan mentality. Uh, so if, you're, if you've agreed a plan at the beginning of the year, um, then that is not a commitment. It is a, it is a promise. So it's not, I'll try hard to do it. I might do it if circumstances don't change. It is, I promise to do it. Promising is binary. You either keep your promise or you break your promise. Um, we have an uh, institutionalized view that bad news should come to the top quickly. Uh, there's a very famous scene in the, uh, the Godfather movie uh, where uh, the, his conciliary goes to uh, Las Vegas to negotiate a deal uh, for the Godfather. Uh, he's unsuccessful. He immediately packs his bag. Then the, the guy on the other side of the table says, why are you leaving? And he said, I'm going to the airport, I'm going back, because the godfather likes to get bad news quickly. Uh, and we work on the same, the same principle. <clears throat> and, it, and if you get it quickly, um, you can do something about it, and most people want to sweep it under the carpet um, and not tell you about it on the basis that it will eventually um, have a life of its own. Um, and finally, uh, recognizing people. So at our annual conference every year, we have um, an executive of the year and we have a, a team of the year. Um, we have Lion Legends, uh, who are people who have successfully completed uh, 15 years or more service with us. And interestingly, our uh, record score so far is someone who's got 50 years service with us. On the loose side, um, we allow people to do, uh, to do their own programming, how we're going to achieve the goals. Uh, the spend allocation is theirs. Interestingly, uh, we don't, uh, I don't sign off on expenses. No one in the organization does. 
We have a trust principle. So you sign off on your own expenses. Um, we work on the principle that our people are honest. So why would you check expenses if your people are honest? Um, and at the end of the year, uh, our internal audit team basically audit, uh, audit the expenses. And if we catch people cheating, uh, we fire them. Um, how do we remunerate our leaders? Um, uh, it's very simple, um, uh, but very different, I think, to a large number of companies in Australia. Uh, this is my uh, salary, uh, so I've used this as an example. Um, uh, uh, these are percentages, not dollars. <laughs> uh, uh, my base salary is uh, one third of my total remuneration. It has no leverage. Uh, what that basically means is it's fixed. It has been for five years, so my salary doesn't change. Um, I, I have an annual bonus, uh, which is set on three uh, targets for the year. Uh, one of them is uh, 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 the team bonus, one of them is an individual bonus, uh, and one of them is uh, one of the game breakers for the organization. Uh, and that's 13%, uh, and that can be from zero, so I get nothing, uh, to 400% of that 13. And then finally, I have a long-term incentive program, which uh, is over three years. So it's the uh, long-term incentive uh, program uh, linked to the long-term performance of the company, and we're given that in stock. Um, and uh, I would suggest to you um, that uh, 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 there's a whole lot of hullabaloo about options. We've never given options. We don't believe in options. Options are uh, asymmetric. Um, what we do is we basically say you get a certain amount of money. You get that money given to you in stock. There is no shareholder dilution because we go out and buy the stock. Um, it's symmetric. If the stock goes up, your wealth goes up. If the stock goes down, your wealth goes down. And unlike options, we expense that annually. So what you see is what you get. So let me take you now from the, uh, and I'm conscious I'm overstaying my welcome and you guys are getting hungry. Let me take you to the uh, culture cog. I said our core purpose is to make the world a more sociable place. Um, we truly believe in that. Um, if you saw me at the Melbourne Cup, uh, I presented the Melbourne Cup for my sins last year. I wasn't all that interested in presenting the Melbourne Cup, but I was interested in telling 50 million people who were watching that our purpose is to make the world a more sociable place. Um, our core values um, are, and again, uh, we spent three days working on these. Uh, passion for the business. Um, uh, you can get passionate about uh, beer and wine. I used to work in the pet food business. Let me tell you, you cannot get passionate about pet food. <laughs> I know, because on a Monday morning, my job was to taste the pet food. Um, this is not a business that you can get passionate about. And let me tell you, not only that, you can't ask the dogs whether the pet food tasted good. So you have to try it yourself. And on a Friday, my job was to look at doggy poo, because you can't ask the dogs whether the pet food is working effectively or not. And um, boy, was I glad to leave the pet food business. <laughs> uh, the second thing is facing reality. Um, get the bad news up quickly. Um, acting with integrity. Um, and for us, that, that's not a huge moral imperative. It's no more, simp it's no more complicated than you, you do what you said you were going to do. Um, if people call you, you get back to them. Um, helping each other. Um, this is a team. Um, and, uh, and we believe that it's, uh, uh, that it's not a... Uh, a team of stars, it's actually a star team. And then finally, being sociable. Uh, and that starts with, if someone comes to our office, um, the people on reception, um, we, we uh, inculcate in them that these are people visiting our home, that you should treat them with the same respect and the same sociability as people who come to your home. You offer them simple things like, would you like a cup of coffee? Would you like a cup of tea? Would you like a glass of water? Would you like an office to use to make a telephone call while you're waiting? You'd be amazed the number of companies I visit where they keep you waiting and don't offer you the elementary uh, civilities. Um, our, our motivating sense of purpose, um, I won't go through all of this. Uh, the numbers have changed slightly because uh, we failed to buy the Montana wine business, which would have put our wine profits above 200 million. So we've modified those slightly. Uh, but what we're trying to do is no more uh, bold or aggressive than create the 21st century's best drinks company. Uh, people said to me, geez, uh, that's, uh, that's pretty bold. Um, yes, it is. Um, and they say, well, uh, how are we going to do that? Uh, and quite honestly, um, I don't know. I don't, I don't have a clue. Uh, but I think we've got 100 years to do it. <laughs> here's our, uh, here's our uh, OCI. Uh, and you can see 
1996, um, a very competitive culture. Uh, that was the primary style. Uh, the secondary style, uh, well, they were all in the aggressive defensive. You can see the progress we've made in not only reducing that, um, but in becoming much more constructive. So you can see the blue um, has got uh, significantly um, uh, more attractive uh, for us as an organization. Um, the fact that we've made these culture changes was not just recognized internally, um, but was also recognized um, um, by our peers, uh, which was enormously encouraging. Um, uh, there is a, um, a competition, I guess you'd say, uh, although Hewitt, who, who organize it, probably uh, are cringing at me calling it a competition. Um, but the, uh, the list of best employers to work for in Australia, um, we uh, participated in, in the year 2000. It's very rigorous. It's a two-day submission uh, from the company. Um, there's a, uh, a, a, the submission that the CEO has to do takes about three to five hours. Um, including how you spend your time, um, which is quite, quite sobering. Um, uh, then uh, one in every three of our employees um, are um, uh, surveyed as well. Uh, recognize uh, that the majority of our employees um, are um, on the shop floor. Um, so it's, it's quite difficult for us. Um, well, no, that's unfair. It shouldn't be any more difficult for us uh, than anyone else. Um, we, uh, in 2000 were the seventh most admired in the large companies. A number of our people said, that's great, let's not enter again. Um, and uh, uh, th uh, thankfully, uh, a number of us prevailed uh, because the important thing is we don't enter this in order to be first. We enter this in order to understand how we can do better. And it is gratifying and really an end, an end result that uh, we were recognized as being number four um, in the large companies in Australia. Um, a journalist called me up, I, I don't think he's, he's in the room here today, and he said, why is it all the sin companies do well? <laughs> oh yeah, and the other, uh, the other point about this chart, uh, that any of you here from Foster's, um, um, I'm sorry that you only made number nine. So as I said, coming out of that survey, what were the positives? Um, uh, and this is what our, our, our people were telling us about ourselves, which is the real reason why we do it. Um, the people around here are passionate for the business, that they enjoy working for a company that's successful, um, that we have a sense of fairness, um, uh, uh, that it's not hierarchical, that they do enjoy our social responsibility. We take very seriously the fact that we um, have large breweries around the place, that we have an environment that would be all too easy to pollute but we don't um, because we have to uh, take care of the uh, land where we brew for our children. Uh, we have a social responsibility that believes um, that what we take from society we should also give back. Um, so we have a foundation um, that gives about half a million dollars to charity. We don't ask no uh, uh, director um, for the Australian business or the New Zealand business who also goes around doing the same thing as well. Um, uh, so uh, people feel as though they're, um, they're well communicated with. But let me tell you, um, they don't feel that we do an outstanding job. They think we do a pretty good job in that. Um, uh, where we see that there are opportunities for us, whenever this change takes place in the organization, people feel that they uh, want to be a bigger part of that change um, and that is involved in it rather than being told about it. And we do a pretty poor job there. And let me tell you, I'm humbled by how bad or how wide the gulf is between people's reasonable expectations and what we deliver on. Uh, when it comes to promotion, people expect a very rational environment. Why did this person get promoted? And we need to do a lot more explaining there. Um, development, um, they, they would like us uh, to spend more time uh, on their development plans, talking about the what rather than the how. Uh, sorry, the how rather than the what, excuse me. And then finally, uh, 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 and this really shames me to say it, um, uh, there's a large degree, a lack of trust between us and our employees. Uh, and we were the fourth most admired company. So we have a long ways to go. Finally, let me uh, close by, uh, by leaving you with this one chart. Um, it sums up, uh, I think, the achievement that 5,000 people in the organization have done in a very short space of time. Uh, the culture's improved enormously, morale's up enormously, our turnover is down now to uh, less than 10%. Um, we've, we've got huge success in the organization. Our stock price is at an all-time high, $5.10 yesterday, um, and our profits, uh, as opposed to declining at 3% uh, over the five-year compound, 
uh, if we make 161, which is our guidance to the market this year, uh, they'll be compounding at 11%, and in the latest year, they're up 13.5%. Um, so I'm actually uh, very proud of what we've been able to achieve. So thank you for your attention, and uh, 